Princess Leia, one of the leaders of the Rebel Alliance, reaches out for help against the Empire to one of the last living Jedi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's just one problem. He's on the other side of the galaxy. Princess Leia then records a message as a hologram. This message is entrusted to the droid R2-D2. It's R2-D2's task to locate Obi-Wan and deliver the message. To transport the droid, an X-Wing spacecraft is needed. And to ensure that this spacecraft reaches Obi-Wan on the far side of the galaxy, a journey through hyperspace is mandatory. Once they arrive on the other side via hyperspace, the same steps are taken in reverse. The X-Wing exits hyperspace and heads toward the planet where Obi-Wan is located to deliver R2-D2. R2-D2 then searches for Obi-Wan and, once found, initiates the program to project Leia's holographic message. Obi-Wan can then view the message. Each of these steps is vital. You cannot skip a step in this communication model. What we've just seen are the core principles of the OSI model. The OSI model, for Open Systems Interconnection, aims to define the standard for network communications. It's a set of rules to follow in order to exchange information over a network. In simpler terms, if a device, such as a computer or server, adheres to this norm, it can exchange information with various machines from different manufacturers over a network. In the OSI model, network communication is divided into seven layers. Each layer has a specific role in network communication and contributes to the overall communication process. Each layer has its own protocols that enable communication between the various layers, collectively allowing communication from one machine to another. The application layer serves as the user's access point to application services. For example, to send an email using the SMTP protocol, view a web page using the HTTP protocol, or transfer files via FTP. This layer serves as the interface between humans and machines. More concretely, it encompasses applications like your web browser, such as Firefox, Safari, Chrome, email software like Outlook, Thunderbird, or FTP client, such as FileZilla. Next is the presentation layer, responsible for data formatting. It's a kind of translation layer for the network. Its goal is to enable communication between machines using different data representations. This includes tasks like data conversion, reformatting, and compression. The session layer manages communication organization by facilitating session establishment, maintenance, and termination between machines. It identifies you and establishes an exchange session with another network machine, terminating the session when completed. The transport layer selects the best way to transmit information based on communication constraints. There are two protocols in this layer, UDP and TCP. UDP sends information without guarantee of reception, while TCP ensures reliable communication. For instance, think of TCP as sending mail with a return receipt. You're notified when the mail arrives. In contrast, UDP is like sending an untracked letter, so there's no guarantee it will reach the recipient. The network layer handles packet routing between network nodes from point A to point B. The most commonly used protocol is IP, for internet protocol. Here, IP addressing is managed. To recap, an IP address is an identification number assigned to each device connected to a computer network using the internet protocol. The data link layer defines how data transmission occurs between two machines on the same network. This layer establishes a data link, including the concept of MAC addresses for media access control. Each network interface has a unique MAC address that identifies it within the network. Examples of layer protocols include Ethernet and PPP for point-to-point -point protocol used by telecom operators. PPP is notably the protocol connecting your router to the internet. Lastly, the physical layer refers to the physical connection on the network for transmitting and receiving binary format computer data, also known as bits. This layer encompasses the physical characteristics of communication, including cables, fiber optic links, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. When machine A sends a message to machine B, the sending process spans from layer 7 to layer 1. On the other hand, during reception, 
the message follows the reverse path. It starts from layer 1 and reaches layer 7. It's worth noting that the OSI model is a theoretical framework used for network comprehension. In practice, this model is often too rigid and segmented. In reality, certain layers can perform the functions of other layers. In practice, the TCP IP model is implemented within machines. The TCP IP model simplifies the OSI model into four layers. The top three layers of the OSI model, application, presentation, and session, are combined into a single layer, the application layer. As its name implies, it encompasses application protocols like HTTP, FTP, SMTP, SSH, DNS, etc. The physical and data link layers are merged into the network access layer. This layer simply handles the connection between two machines. The transport layer remains unchanged, with TCP being the most used protocol for this layer, TCP for Transmission Control Protocol. Its role is the same as the OSI model's transport layer. It fragments the message for transmission on the internet layer. On the destination machine, TCP rearranges the fragments transmitted on the internet layer to reconstruct the original message. There's also a layer known as the internet layer, where the most commonly used protocol is IP for internet protocol, hence the name TCP IP model. It's important to note that TCP IP also serves as a communication protocol for private networks. The internet layer with the internet protocol, handles routing. IP ensures packet routing from a source to a destination. This is where we can draw parallels between this layer and the network layer of the OSI model. This layer adds information like the sender's address, the recipient's IP address, and other data to control message routing, such as the gateway's IP address. Now, let me explain how communication unfolds in the TCP IP model. During transmission, the data passes through each layer on the sending machine. At each layer, an additional piece of information, called a header, is added to the data packet. This process is called encapsulation. All this is ultimately transformed into bits to be transmitted across the network to the other machine. On the receiving machine, at each layer, the header is read, interpreted, and then removed. When the data reaches the application layer, it's in its original state. This is the reverse process, referred to as de-encapsulation. Let's dive a bit deeper by discussing the PDU, for Protocol Data Unit. As the packet of data passes through each layer, its appearance changes because a header is added, and so the terminology varies with each layer. In practical terms, the Protocol Data Unit identifies a message's position within the TCP IP model, the data is called a message at the application layer. The message is then encapsulated as a segment in the TCP layer. Once encapsulated in the internet layer, it becomes a packet. Finally, at the network access layer, it's called a frame. Up until now, we've seen examples of machines like computers or servers that use all the layers of the OSI model. However, this isn't always the case. Network devices like switches or routers use only specific layers of the OSI model. A router connects different networks, whereas a switch links multiple devices within a single network. The switch only requires layers 1 and 2 of the OSI model, data link and network layers, because it needs to know only your MAC address, which resides at layer 2, to forward your frame to the correct port. The router needs layers 1, 2, and 3, including the network layer. This is why a router enables communication between networks. For instance, when I connect to the internet, it's the router that links my LAN to the internet, and this link is established at layer 3, or the transport layer of the OSI model. We've reached the end of this video. I hope it was informative and enjoyable. If you want to keep up with the latest in tech and computer science, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. I can't wait to delve into more tech topics with you in our future videos. Goodbye.